My name is Alan Dowling and I'm the environmental educator for the city of Monroe. Today we're going to make recycled paper seed balls. The first step I'm going to go over is to shred and soak your paper. So if you've already done that, great. You can either dance around for a minute or two while I explain it to the others or you can try to fast forward. If you're going to try and fast forward, I'm actually going to soak this overnight. Um, so if you see me wearing a blue shirt, you'll know when to pause your video and resume. If you haven't shredded or soaked your paper, welcome. I'm going to suggest that you at least do it for an hour, um, but basically the more time you can give the paper to break down, the more time the fibers will have to become all pulpy and easier to chop up later. So if you do have a blender that you can use today or that you can have your parents help you use, um, then you can probably do with a little less soaking time. But the great thing about today is while you're waiting for your recycled paper scraps to get all mushy and waterlogged, you can check out some of the other great Heritage Fest activities and come back and join me later when I'm wearing my blue shirt. So I've got um, some old flyers that have old information on it, so I'm going to use these to shut up. And I'm also going to use this um, egg curtain. I'm going to break it into pieces because a lot of times these are made from recycled paper anyway. Um, I'm actually going to be using some scissors today, but if you have access to a paper shredder, um, you can definitely do that as long as just be careful whether you're using scissors or a paper shredder. Make sure you're having adult help or supervision where you need it. Um, and then I'm going to have a bin that I'm going to put all my scraps in so that they can soak in some water. So I'm actually going to fold this in half to make it a little bit easier. Alright, I'm going to speed this up a little bit, so if you need more time, definitely just pause the video and come back when you're done. So now I'm going to take my water. I've just got some tap water in here. And I'm going to pour enough water to at least cover all the paper. I'm going to let this sit for um, overnight and see what it looks like when I come hey, in. I'm back for day two. So I've got my pulpy recycled paper mix from yesterday with water in it that has sat overnight. I've got one that I started just around an hour ago. Um, so it hasn't been sitting quite as long and not as much time for those fibers to break down. For that one, I am gonna be using a blender, um, but if you don't have a blender, that's okay. We're gonna try that too, but it will help if you can make sort of a pulpy mixture that's really ground down. So if you do have an adult that can help you with a blender, um, there are sharp parts and it can be quite messy. So that would be great. Um, if you do have a colander or some sort of strainer, um, I'm going to use this box with some holes in the bottom to try and um, get all the water out of my mixture once I'm done with it. I've also got my seeds here. Um, I have a few cookie cutters and some tins to work on because I'm at my desk. But if you are in a kitchen where you can just work on the counter or the tabletop, that would be great. I would highly recommend using a drying rack to improve the airflow and let them fully dry out. And don't put them in the sun, they might sprout. Okay, so as I said, I'm gonna try this two different ways. This is my overnight bin. Um, and what I'm gonna do with this is I am actually just gonna try to break this up a little bit more with my hands. Um, that way we can try and break up those fibers and if we don't have a blender at our disposal. If so, just keep working. But if you do have a blender or a food processor, it's time to use it. You may be able to have an adult pour your mixture straight into the basin, but I'm using a cup so I don't spill it all over my desk. Make sure to add some of the water along with the pulpy mixture to blend and get a good mixture. Here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into this bin here, and this is my container with some of the holes in the bottom. Um, I'm not going to worry about getting too much of the water out yet. We're going to try to put our seeds in. If you have a better colander or filter with bigger holes, mine kept getting clogged, so I wasn't able to pour my mixture into my colander. But here, I'm going to add some seeds, and I bought some native seeds, including milkweed, phlox, rebecca, and codeflower seeds. They're local and good for our pollinator friends. All right, so I've mixed the seeds in with my hands here. And I am just going to try to squeeze out the water and put it into this tin over here. Now, if you've got a colander or a strainer or something like that, 
um, that's great, but if you don't, we'll just use a little bit of muscle and try to get out as many, as much water as you can. But you want it to be a little bit moist still. It doesn't have to be totally dry because you do want to be able to work it with your hands. And so you can see I have my two different mixes and this one here is the one that I didn't use a blender or any type of food process or anything to chop up. And I just used um, overnight mix that I mixed with my hands and ripped it up. This one is um, the one that I got to put in the blender. So you can see it's much more uniform in color and shape. You can't see the different recycled paper still or any of the words. So it is useful if you do have a blender. But we're gonna try to make some shapes with both. So what I'm gonna do is with this one, it might be a little bit easier just to make some balls and not worry about shapes too much. Um, but it still is possible. And let's try to make one of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of mix in and that's gonna be my recycled paper and in my case, egg carton. And I'm not going to fill it all the way to the top over here. Cause that will be really hard to dry. So I'm just gonna press this in until I put it on all sides. Press down around the edges and then I'm just going to hold it down with one hand and pick the cookie cutter up with the other hand. And it kind of looks like an acorn, right? Does anybody know why I might have picked an acorn today to make my shapes with? Because an acorn is a big seed. So I made a big acorn seed full of wildflower seeds that I'm gonna plant in my garden. Otherwise, you could try to make um, just some pancakes, things like, we're gonna plant these in some wonderful soil, we're gonna give them water and a place to be, and they're gonna be underground, so it doesn't matter exactly what they look like. But let's see what we can do with this mix. Now this mix is gonna be much easier to use, but again, you can still make shapes with any of them. So I can make a ball, like little seed meatballs, or we could make a pancake. So what if we roll it up and then squish it down, make a flat kind of disc, like a frisbee, a little mini frisbee. Or I'm actually gonna try to make an oak leaf. So what I'm gonna do, same as I did with my acorn, I'm going to try to take little bits of my mixture and push it along the sides. I'm not going to worry about the stem. That part is so small, I doubt that's going to be able to stay connected when I lift off the cookie cutter. I'm just going to put it all the way around. And again, I'm not trying to fill this all the way up to the top. Because if I fill this up to the top, it will take a really long time to dry. It'll still take, I would leave these overnight and feel them and see if they feel pretty dry. Um, depending on how much water you did squeeze out, it could take less time or more time for them to dry. So just keep that in mind. Um, and if you're gonna plant them now, because I would take a look at your packet, at your seed packet, or look online. If you're gonna plant your seeds now, that's great. If you're going to save these for later, I would recommend making sure they are 100% dry before you put them in any kind of container to save them for later. So why did the supplies list ask for paper from your recycling cart today? The symbol we usually call the recycle symbol is made of three arrows. Do you know why there are three? It is for the three R's, to reduce, reuse, and recycle. To reduce means using or buying less materials and therefore making less waste from the beginning. To reuse means using something you already have for the same purpose over and over, like refilling a reusable water bottle, or it can be to create a new purpose for something you already have, like reusing paper from your recycling bin for our activity today. Recycle is the third R. To recycle means to produce new items from used material. For example, when cans are recycled, the metal is melted down and new cans are shaped, filled, and sold. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you had a lot of fun making our recycled paper seed balls or other shapes. I did. Um, 
always remember to reduce, reuse, and recycle whenever you can. And if you do live in the city of Monroe, be sure to check out our website. We have resources on what's acceptable in your recycling cart um, in both English and Spanish. And if you do live in another municipality or have a private hauler, be sure to check out their website to make sure whatever you're putting in your recycling cart or bin is accepted in the program. I hope you have a lot of fun doing many, many activities at Virtual Heritage Fest today. Thanks!